In the two-part premiere for American Horror Stories, we got The Rubber Man, The Murder House on Halloween, and a fed-up Matt Bomer. I wish that kidnapper would've kept me! <sighs> so do we. Michael. Sorry. Sorry, I went dark. Hey everyone, yes that's right, we're back. And I come back to you now. At the turn of the tide. First off, don't worry, Ryan and I will be back together in August to join you for our weekly breakdowns. This video will take a look at the premiere episodes of Stories and also point out all the Easter eggs and references that we could find so far. Written by creators Ryan Murphy and Brad Falchuk, and directed by Lonnie Peristeer, this is the first two episodes of American Horror Stories, Rubber Woman. Let's jump in, spoilers ahead. The two-part opener revisits everyone's favorite LA hellmouth, The Murder House. House flipping couple Michael, played by Matt Bomer, and Troy, played by Gavin Creel, move into the murder house with their angsty teenage daughter, Scarlett, played by Sierra McCormick. Get it? Scarlett? Violet? Oh yeah, and there's Rupe. Moving on, it turns out that Scarlett is a fan of the more violent and sadistic themes in the kink realm, which leads the rubber man spirit right to her. She finds the famous gimp suit, and this is a standalone episode, so she puts that suit on with no questions asked. And Scarlett is immediately freaked out, just like Ben Harmon. The next day, she locks eyes with her classmate Maya, played by Paris Jackson. And as you would expect on American Horror Story, things go horribly wrong. This all leads back to the murder house where Scarlett manages to lure Maya and crew to the basement so they can roll that red ball around with Beauregard Langdon for eternity. Now, this is mirroring Tate's prank from the series premiere of AHS. Get the lights. Scarlet in the rubber suit takes out the mean girls with a little help from Infantata. In part two, we meet Ruby, played by Kaya Gerber, who killed herself in the LA home at some point and has been held captive by the house ever since. At some point, she falls in love with Scarlet and she asks for the ultimate commitment so they can be together for eternity. Now, regardless of Scarlet's final decision, Ruby vows to protect her from the Mean Girls 2.0. Meanwhile, Michael and Troy's relationship is starting to fall apart, just like pretty much every other couple that stepped into this damn house. Do you think I like carving 20 pumpkins and getting squash guts under my nails? Troy hires a contractor, planning to pay him in sexual favors, but that comes to a screeching halt when they find Scarlet's bricked up victims. Shouts to James March. Trying to seize an opportunity, Adam kills his colleague and tries to blackmail Michael and Troy. He doesn't even make it off the porch before he's stabbed repeatedly by the rubber man. And Michael and Troy, while trying to get the hell out, discover they can't leave the house. As it turns out, they're already ghosts. They were killed by Ruby in an attempt to persuade Scarlet to stay with her. Yikes. And this all leads to Halloween, the one day that the dead can walk among the living. Sure enough, Maya plans to kill Scarlet outside the house so she won't be able to live forever with Ruby. And like I said earlier, this is a self-contained short story, so Scarlet, Ruby, and the Mean Girls all forgive each other for the horrendous things they did, including the deaths of Scarlet's dads, in only a few hilarious short hours. The episode comes to a close with Scarlet deciding to live outside the house and wear the gimp suit as American Horror Story's Punisher, looking for justice for Ruby. Now let's take a look at all the things we noticed and Easter eggs. There were numerous thematic references from AHS Murder House all over the two episodes. From the very start, the car ride is a direct nod to the first episode. Even Scarlett's outfit mirrors Tate Langdon's first look on the series. Also, I'm sorry, but if you pop on that famous green hat with an L on it, Scarlett might start to resemble a certain brother to a famous Italian Nintendo character. In the final moments of the episode, Ruby runs to embrace Scarlett in Tate's Normal People Scare Me t-shirt. The red ball creeps out Scarlet early in the episode. This belongs to poor Beauregard Langdon, who died in the house at the hands of Larry Harvey at the request of his cruel mother, Constance Langdon. Twisted Nerve by Bernard Herrmann plays throughout the episode. This track was used multiple times throughout the franchise, including during Tate's school shooting. Can I help you? 
Tonight You Belong to Me also plays in part two. The song played in both the season premiere and finale of season one Murder House. Those disturbing Murder House murals are peeled back yet again. Now there's still a billion unanswered questions about the origins of the paintings, and I wouldn't be shocked if some of those questions are revealed in an episode in the future. The Redcurd twins return, who the therapist sees briefly before the Rubberman kills her Norman Bates style. You can hear the soundbite from a young Adelaide Langdon that was delivered to the Redcurd twins right before they met their demise. Excuse me. You are going to die in there. You're going to die in here. Butterflies pop up a few times in this episode. They're also there for season one, and they could be a little nod to Constance's first appearance in American Horror Story. I took that little butterfly of a dream and put it in a jar on the shelf. We get more crying in the bathtub moments, which are a direct nod to Tate and Violet. There's a cute nod to Ben Harmon, delivered by ghost therapist Dr. Andy Grant. I've got some time between four and six. There's another therapist here, so I'm just fighting for office hours. I'm good, thanks. Ruby and Scarlett attend a freak show Halloween party, which is a gentle nod to season four. Nurse Gladys returns and is immediately killed by Ruby before eventually becoming pals. In season one Murder House, Gladys and fellow nursing student Maria were murdered by serial killer R. Franklin. I don't remember hearing anything on the news. <laughs> The realtor who was selling the house found my body in the note. She buried my bones in the backyard and burned the note. This has to be Marcy, the famous shady realtor that sold the house to the Harmons in season one. Michael gets spooked by the pig man. In season one, episode six, Piggy Piggy, one of Harmon's patients recounts his fears of the pig man urban legend about a butcher from Chicago. The makeup department is giving the girls in the wall some heavy dead violet vibes. We put Martin in the crawl space with the ladies, then we just Put some lime on them to cover the smell this time. Button it up, good as new, never mention any of this again. Shouts to Kai Anderson. Now, one question I have about this episode involves the plot. Maybe this was used just to explain Scarlet's sadism, but I hope that's not the case. We learned in the episode that as a child, Scarlet was kidnapped for 10 days. Now, who kidnapped Scarlet? Does it even matter? We know the ex-husband murdered their own child and the mother went looking for a new one. This is a theme that's run through American Horror Story in the past, but, but could this be something that's answered in another episode this season through a different point of view? I highly, highly doubt that, but we'll see. Alright, that's it for me over here. Let me know what you thought of the two-part episode in the comments down below, and I'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.